Mario, Ruben is about to create the most precise dark matter map ever made. If those measurements completely contradict what we previously understood about cosmology, how will we even know if we've broken physics for all time? Wouldn't that be great? We've been living with Lambda CDM for the last 20 years or so, but what, what we kind of forget is that we don't actually know what none of that is. It's just a description. Like Lambda is just a number. If Ruben comes back and says, this is not quite the right theory, maybe that gives us a way to understand the physics behind it and not just describe it, but really understand it. Mario, help people understand the scale of things. The Vera Rubin Observatory generates 20 terabytes of data every single night for 10 years. To me, or let me say, that's like downloading the entire internet every week or so. How do you find the needle in that cosmic haystack? You, you work with a lot, a lot of talented people who can build systems to find those needles, both the computers, both the networks, both the software. You do it for in our case, a decade, and then you try it out. That's what this first look is all about. We've tried it out and we're finding needles, many of them. And what about the computing? Maybe say something about the computing scale, you know, um, HPC stuff or what, yeah. what kinds of terab uh, hardware and um, algorithmic, new algorithms have been developed, or an AI too, if that's important. We're, we're looking at tens of petabytes per year, hundreds of petabytes over a decade. We're looking at hundreds of thousands of cores we're looking at AI. We basically need everything that computing can, can offer today, everything that technology can offer to make sense of this data set. Right now, as we're talking, stars are exploding, black holes are merging, dark matter is coalescing all across the universe. How does Rubin turn astronomy from the still photography epoch into watching a high definition movie? And what does that new way of looking at the cosmos tell us about the universe's breaking news? What, what's unique about Rubin is that it's an incredibly fast telescope. It takes a single image, not in hours, but in seconds. So every 30 seconds, we get a new image of, of, of the sky. We repeat that over and over again, and we can construct a movie. So traditionally, astronomy has focused on going as deep as possible, but not that much on what's changing out there. And over the last couple of decades, we realized that a lot is changing. And Rubin is a, is a capstone of that endeavor. We'll now see not just the, the deep universe, but also the changing universe, the time domain universe. So we only know where about half the total asteroids are in our solar system. Some of them could be dangerous to the Earth. How will Vera Rubin Observatory protect us in this cosmic shooting gallery? Yeah, Vera Rubin is uniquely positioned to go and find the, the remaining 60% uh, or so that we don't know about that could be potentially hazardous to Earth. Um, the way we're going to probably protect the Earth is we find them. We find them very early. If there's one that's heading towards us, hopefully there isn't. If there's one that's heading towards us, we want to find it 20, 30, or 40 years ago ahead of time. And then we have time to do something about it. Send a spacecraft, nudge it out of its uh, trajectory, make it miss the Earth. But the key thing is to find it now. That's why um, it's important that we have Ruben in the sky that can do it. Mario, one of the greatest mysteries is whether or not there's a ninth planet lurking in our solar system. What can Vera Rubin do to discover such objects? Maybe just maybe discover things beyond planet nine. If there's a ninth planet out there, more likely than not, we'll find it. Um, and we're not going to have to even wait that long. I, I think if there's a planet, if there's a ninth planet out there, we're likely find to, to find it in the next three years. If it's not out there, we're also likely to be able to say so. So one way or the other, I think in the next three to four years, we'll know if our planetary system has a, another planet that's, uh, that's still hiding from us. And until next time, keep an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out of your skull.